Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about vermiculture. And today the topic is going to be truth and myth in regards to the compost bin. So today we are in on looking in on my European Nightcrawler half barrel. And uh, we're going to get right into it. So number one. Uh, I don't have any examples of this, but you can probably see right along the edges here where you can see castings, but no worms. The number one thing is that worms call, crawl the walls or try and escape out of the bin because there's something wrong with the bin. And that is always, not always true. Of course, it could be true that you've overfed or that it's too hot. But most of the time when you're looking at things like blue worms or African night crawlers, one of the reasons that they crawl the walls is because it is in their nature to be uh, very sensitive to atmospheric pressure, to vibrations within the soil, and they have kind of a flea response, which causes them to escape and sometimes, you know, get out of the worm bin and die. So it's not always about something that you have done to your bin. Sometimes it is just in the nature of the worm. So I'm just gonna continue working on the bin here. Number two is that you absolutely need to have grit added every single time that you work on your worm bin or feed them. And this is also a myth. Worms will actually reuse the grit, if that is a good way to say it. But basically when they go through, they're eating as they go along. And as you can see the white specks here, this is grit from previous times and they will continue to reconsume the material in the bin many, many times. So they will also be reusing the grit. As humans, we kind of find that gross, but it's the life of a worm. What are you gonna do? Okay, so let me get going here. We're doing a little bit of fluffing. I think one of the things that I've decided is that uh, I'm not very good at this half barrel thing and that I am gonna move some of the worms into kind of a bunk bed situation. I have got an, the other half barrel and I put it underneath of this one. And so when we get to the part with all the worms, I am gonna be grabbing some out and moving them to the one below because they are starting to lose their size on me and I do not want that. So I am going to pull out some worms a little bit later. Okay, so the third thing that is myth or truth is that spicy foods will physically hurt your worms. I mean, it probably won't emotionally hurt them either, but you know what I mean. Just like if we eat super spicy things, how we'll get a stomach ache and our mouth will burn. Uh, worms and birds and non-mammals don't have the same pain receptors that we do. And so therefore the way that capsaicin works is it binds with our pain receptors, giving us the idea that uh, well, we are in pain. And uh, I will link to the book below that uh, I'm getting the chili information from. But basically, they can't feel it. It doesn't bother them at all. It is just food. In fact, if you're from um, a country that grows peppers in the wild, you know, like Mexico, um, birds, you know, peppers are like their favorite food. In fact, some of the most famous peppers are called bird peppers because they always find the birds sitting on the pepper plants, just sitting there munching on a chili. So that is in fact a myth. Uh, spicy foods do not bother the worms. Of course, if you're, you know, if you're trying to feed your worms super hot, so I recommend you wear gloves because it will hurt you. And I have done that. I've been like, why are my hands burning? Oh, that's right. Cause you're feeding them peppers and uh, they're not bothered, but I am. Okay, so we're gonna continue to dig on here. And one of the things that I was saying that I was going to pull some of the worms out here is because the European nightcrawlers are starting to lose their size. And uh, I did get gifted a pound from Gatano at Northeast Worms, and they were lovely large worms once upon a time. And uh, I couldn't find any of them that were super huge the last time I was in here, so I think I'm running into a situation of overpopulation. Okay, so number four is tap water. You should not ever use tap water on your worms or making their bedding with the worms. And this actually kind of depends on where you live and what kind of water you have. For me, I have city water and they do use chlorine where I live to sanitize my drinking water. 
And so, uh, in my case, I actually do use uh, what is considered a fish conditioner, or fish water conditioner. And I do add that to the water before I am going to use it directly on the worms. Uh, some places use something called chloranamine, which does not evaporate the way chlorine does. And it could potentially, you know, if they just dose the pipes, it could actually really hurt your worms. So if you're in an area that you're not sure what they do with your water before it comes to you in the pipe, then you should check that out at the city website. But if you know that your your water comes from a reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis plant, or if you have well water that you know that is not treated, then you don't have to uh, do that as far as, you know, treating the water. I do it because I know I have a problem. Because sometimes, you know, my drinking water smells like a swimming pool. So I know that I have to do something to protect my worms. So that's kind of like part myth, part not myth. It just depends on where you live. All right, these guys are all over the place, aren't they? Check them out. But I'm still not seeing any really big worms. I was hoping to find a couple in here. Wanted to look at them underneath the microscope. This one's pretty good size. I'll save him. All right, so number five. Let's talk about forbidden foods. So forbidden foods are things that people say that you should absolutely 100% never should feed to your worms and honestly as far as the worms food goes there's really nothing that i can think of that i have ever thought of feeding that is bad for the worms uh, one of the maybe do nots is do not overfeed it doesn't really matter what you feed them but make sure that you're feeding them an appropriate amount for the number of worms that you have and also the you know conditions that your bin is running in you can, there are no hard fasts about how much you know food to feed a worm i know a lot of people ask how much or did it, is this too much and unfortunately the the truth of the matter is that um it depends and everybody hates that answer but like right now my worms aren't eating as much as they usually do simply because it's cooler in my basement now it's about 65 degrees so they're not eating as fast as they were, you know, in the summer. So as far as forbidden foods, I have fed my worms pineapple and oranges and lemons and limes. I have fed them super hot chilies. I have fed them ginger. And between the worms and their buddies in the worm bin, they have eaten it all and everybody has been fine. So that is, it is sort of a myth, but there are certain things, like I did do an experiment where I was feeding meat to the worms. And I will tell you that although the worms did get around to eating it, it did attract pests in the way of uh, flies. So although the worms can eat it, uh, it may not be your best idea for your living space just because of the uh, filth flies that get attracted to it. All right, we're almost to the feeding zone here. See, got little tiny peppers in here, and the worms love them. Okay. I know we fed pumpkin last time, so I'm hoping we will get a bit of a worm ball. All right, we're getting there. Okay, feel something squishy. Squishy paper. Okay, well, it's not a beautiful worm ball, but uh, there are a lot of worms. They're just not in a organized, these are unorganized worms. <laughs> It'll be okay. Uh, let's see, let's flip this one over, see if we can see anything cool. Yeah, it's okay. Can't get a, you know, cool worm ball every single time, right? Okay, well, let's keep making sure we're getting the air to this. Okay, so another thing that has come up recently is the concept of organic food. Um, and if you've been around in the channel a lot of time, you know, if you have been with the channel for a while, you know I do work in the food industry, and so I do have some knowledge of the regulatory industry as far as what it takes to be considered organic. 
and feeding your worms only organic food. Is it necessary? Is it bad for the worms to feed them not organic food? Nope. Again, sim similar to uh, forbidden foods, the worms, man, look at all those babies all over the place. You know, I think the worm bin's overpopulated, but yet they are still breeding. Look at that. All right, guys. No hitchhikers. Get back in the bin. All right. So similar to forbidden food, organic food and or should you only feed organic food is, is not necessary. Now for me, some people are almost religious about organic food. And if you are, that's totally fine. You do you. But in my opinion, the worms are going to eat it, whether it was, you know, brought in from a farm that is completely organic or if it was, you know, a traditionally farmed apple or broccoli or what have you. All right. So although the worms will eat it, whether it is organic or not, the, the choice is all yours. It is not going to hurt your worms. You know, if they eat an apple that was grown on a farm that uses traditional um, chemical pesticides and herbicides. There are some persistent chemicals that do manage to go through and get into us, and that is a debate for someplace else, not here. We're all about the worms. We're not about the drama. We're not about the politics. We're just about what can you feed the worms, and the worms do not care. Um, what you care about is something entirely different. Okay, I am going to grab some of these up and start putting them underneath, and I'll show you that at the end. Okay, I think that took out about maybe not quite a half. So that'll give me some room to work with the worms a little bit more than I have been having. It's been super full in here and that's not really been good for me to try and work in the bin. Okay, on to the next myth or truth. Worms are bad for the environment. What, these cute little things? Are you kidding me? Yep, actually that one is true, that some worm species uh, are considered to be invasive species. I'm in Illinois and it is considered, the Alabama jumper is considered an invasive species here. They've actually, you know, had news reports and tell people how to kill it and how do you identify it and there's been quite the drama. But one of the reasons that worms can be uh, an invasive species is because in forests, the forest and all of the plant fungi species, probably even the insect species that live in a forest, rely on that top layer of duff. Fallen leaves, needles, whatever. And if that is not there, those species can't live. And so basically what you're left with then is a out of balance ecosystem. So it is true that worms can be an invasive species. These are European night crawlers. They're not considered an uh, invasive species here where I live in Illinois. Uh, it just depends. You should probably look at your local legislation and find out what's illegal for you. I know people in Canada have other worms that are invasive. If you are from Canada, uh, please put in the comments below what kind of worm is considered invasive up there. And also the people, you know, if you're on different parts of the world, um, are they all up in arms about the different species of worms? You know, and what are they doing about it? All right, I'm gonna put back the food that was here before, now that we've made some room. Man, I saved out that big worm. There you go, there he is. All right, let's put that down there. And I will actually just come over here and feed a little bit farther over. I don't think that that leftover pumpkin is enough to get them through to the next feeding. In my case, I'm feeding this bin about every three weeks, and so I want to make sure that they have enough to make it, you know, for that much longer. Okay, they're going to get quite a bit of slow food this time. So we've got, none of this has been frozen, 
So we've got carrots and celery and onions and tea bags and potatoes. So none of this has been frozen, so it should be absolutely, probably mostly still there when we come back in three weeks. All right, so I'm gonna cover that up. All right, so next myth or legend. There should only be worms in the worm bin. That is false. Uh, in a functioning ecosystem of a worm bin, you're going to need the mites and the springtails and arthropods and stuff like that. If your goal is the same as mine, and that is one of the things, is that if your goal is not the same as mine, which is to keep things out of the landfill and recycle and make uh, soil amendments such as worm castings, that's my goal, and so therefore I need the ecosystem to do everything that it does in here. However, if you are a professional worm farmer and your only goal is to grow these little guys up as big as possible so you can sell them, you're working on a whole different system than I am. And I suggest that you go look at the Garden and Worm Lady. She does it professionally. If you wanna know how to do that, go see her channel. She is amazing and organized and just love watching her channel, so go check her out. But, you know, she feeds worm chow so that her worms will get bigger so that she can sell them. Um, but she has a whole different, you know, her business is different. I don't have a business. I don't sell worms. I don't sell castings. I do this only for my own yard and for my own family. Um, if you like the idea of being a bigger part of the world and rescuing food from grocery stores throwing away, you could go look at AJ Screen Topics. He has been rescuing uh rotten groceries and feeding it to his worms. So go check out AJ's Green Topics. In fact, I actually have his shirt on today. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's just got worms. And I absolutely do have worms, as do they. All right, let's go look and see what the bottom bin is doing. Okay, here's my bottom bin. It's a little bit dark, but all you're going to see is basically me spreading out worms here. So the, the number nine truth or myth that people do seem to be attached to is that worms, their compost. All right, so for the rest of the, the video, we're going to uh, do a little bit of harvesting of blue over here and finish up our top 10 myths or truths. If you saw the video where I have been adding amendments like kelp meal and azomite to my bedding when I feed it to my worms, I am trying to mitigate this, but for the most part, you're never going to be able to just feed worm castings and have healthy plants. Unfortunately, you know, some heavy feeders like tomatoes or potatoes, etc., they're not going to be good with just what is in worm castings. Uh, so you will have to add organic something or even uh, inorganic fertilizers to boost the nitrogen, etc. Number 10, and this is the biggest myth of them all. Worms eat their weight in new food every single day. Now that is just not true. Mm. However... I think the reason that this has become such a, a big Worban legend is that way back when I think Darwin did his book about worms like a hundred years ago, he said that worms consume their body weight a day. But they're not talking about brand new food that they're processing. Worms, as they're going along their happy way in the worm bin or the ground, are eating as they go. They're not like us, where they go get a bowl and a fork and, and go eat some vegetables. They actually consume things as they go along. In so doing, they actually probably put through their mouth and out through their behind their body weight a day. But it's not new food that they can process. Looking at my bins, I would say that it's probably not even once a week. So if you think that you're going to buy a pound of worms and they're going to eat a pound of food a day, that is not reasonable. That is not going to happen. What you're going to do is overfeed your worms and probably kill them. So what I'm going to say is that you shouldn't try to go by any sort of hard, fast numbers. You should listen to your worms. So if you feed a pound of food to your one pound of red wigglers and you go peek at it after a week and it's still there, don't feed them. 
come back in another three or four days. You know, if there's just a little food left, maybe you could feed them. But if there's quite a bit of food left, don't, don't give them more. So when you're looking to be a new worm farmer and you're in the first maybe six months of your journey as a worm farmer, you don't have all of the microbes and all of the uh, little helpers in your bin yet. And so honestly, you need to build that up before you build up your expectations as to what a worm bin can actually consume in a week. So don't, you know, patience is, you know, one of the hardest virtues to have when you're a worm farmer. You want them to hurry up and do everything. But the best thing for the worms is to wait and to look at them and say uh, they don't need food or they do need food and then act accordingly. So one of the, so that is my best advice and probably the biggest worm myth that there is, is that they will eat their weight every single day or every single week, both of which are wrong. All right, guys, well, if you found this content helpful, if you wouldn't mind giving that muddy thumbs up, and if you think you'd like to come back for more content, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Now, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here to watch next. If you wanna watch that video where I added nutrients to the bedding to help out the garden, I will link that over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.